The back squad is without a doubt the number one lift in Sikistan. You could say it's our national lift. In fact, it's actually impossible to get your visa stamped without a 200 kilo squat. Well, unless a uh, hefty bribe is provided. You could also say we're writing a book on the back squat. You could say that because we are. Thankfully, Sikistan isn't the only country to be enamored by the back squat. The squat has undoubtedly overtaken the bench press as one of the most common lifts you'll see in the gym, alongside sumo deadlift and hip thrusts. The back squat is quite simple in terms of complexity when compared to other movements like the snatch or a hammer throw. Simplicity, however, does not imply easy mastery. While there are less moving parts to analyse, if you are unaware of them or ignorant of the correct area to focus on, you'll be forever paddling up shit creek. One of the most common areas of weakness for many high bar squatters is the rack position. Due to the nature of the high bar squat, it can be very easily left unattended and as a result could be causing you a series of issues that you haven't identified the rack position as the source of. Take a shot in the comments if you can identify yourself in the following problem. You're going for a heavy squat, maybe you're going for a heavy rep max. As the tension builds and reps progress, you see yourself rounding your upper back aggressively. One time you nearly fell over and had to dump the barbell forward. Your immediate thought was, damn my quads are too weak. There's a good chance that's not the only issue though. What's very likely killing you here is that your rack position is suboptimal. Your lack of awareness of how to find and maintain a strong rack position is leading to a lot of weak areas that you need to plug. Today, Li Sang, a Korean weightlifter, and Tian Tao, a Chinese weightlifter, are going to show us how to hold the bar into position and how to do it well. What we're going to focus on is the forearm and wrist angle and how it doesn't change throughout the lift. Now, just to be clear, Tian does this better than Lee, but Lee does a fine job of it, and it's good to see two different body types working the same positive cue. What we're looking at here is how well and consistently both lifters keep their forearm angle throughout the lift. As they unrack the bar, they have the same approximate forearm angle of about 45 degrees, and an almost straight or straight wrist angle. The wrist angle and grip tightness is the linchpin of the strong unrack. If you have too loose a grip or too much extension in your wrist, your ability to keep your forearm, bicep and upper back tight is compromised. Lee has a little bit of extension and Tian has less again. This angle allows us to create and maintain optimal upper back tension. As they squat, this forearm angle stays rigid and defined throughout the entire squat. Again, Tian maintains this a little bit more consistently. A common mistake is for lifters to push their elbows forward as they enter the bottom of the squat and move from some slight wrist extension to full extension. The problem with the forward elbow position is this elongates your mid traps and lats, exposing your upper back to flexion, which pushes the bar forward of your center of balance. There's a subtle window with which the bar can travel without tipping the whole system forward, and this upper back rounding due to a changing forearm angle can push you beyond your limits. This particular forearm and wrist angle is quite important as it allows for the best direction of force into the barbell from our arms. Too much flexion in your wrists, too much force will cause the elbow to move in a circular path, reducing our control of the bar. The hand pressure in a strong rack should feel like a fist with forward and down pressure applied to the bar. Maintaining this forearm angle is actually quite simple once you're aware of it. Practicing it for each and every rep you do goes a long way to reinforce it. Yes, posterior and quad strength are important, but they're not often the main cause of this upper back rounding. You can possess all the strength you need, but unless you're able to direct it in the correct fashion, you won't be able to master the best positions. At the very least, you'll improve the efficiency of these working muscles instead of enforcing them to maintain position under less than ideal circumstances. Lifters will often begin the squat with the best of intention and the tightest of rack positions, but as they begin the squat or come out of the hole, they lose all of it. Your job is to maintain it throughout the whole lift. The cues for the back squat are quite simple, but consistently applying them for every rep is the hard part. If you try this for your next squat session, come back and let me know how it goes. I'm confident you'll find an improvement in your abilities. This video is brought to you by our Black Friday sale, which will be commencing on Friday 9 a.m. GMT, site-wide sale across all programs, and there will be the release of our Black Seeker Strength hoodie.